Okay, so it's a great pleasure to talk at uh, Gilles' uh, birthday. And uh, my collaboration with Gilles is mostly over coffee, but uh, also a few, a few theses and uh, many talks and uh, a couple of, uh, I mean, five joint paper more or less. So you are a great source of inspiration for me. Uh, you have started your career with neural network, and I'm going to end mine with it. So that's the uh, a small remark. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about fish. Um, the uh, my course, uh, Mathieu Laurier is here. He's uh, uh, finishing a, a post at Princeton, and he's going to join uh, uh, NYU at uh, Shanghai. And uh, Gilles, of course, is here. So, um, no, come ça. Non plus. Alors, oui, il marche pas. Ça marche pas. Coincé. C'est le fait d'avoir la photo qui pose un problème. Voilà, d'accord. Non plus. Alors, c'est là. Voilà, c'est bon. Non, c'est pas bon. Ce truc-là communique avec quoi Avec l'ordi qui est là Merci. Ah. Voilà. Um, so, no, this is, yes. Uh, <clears throat> so I got interested by uh, uh, a fishing um, site by my colleague, uh, uh, Pierre Auger, who is uh, uh, in contact with um, uh, the Institute of Fishery of Dakar, and they themselves are in contact with the fishermen. So you see, you have a long link before you can actually go to the uh, concrete application. And so, um, <clears throat> so the model is, uh, of course, an extension of uh, what Pierre Auger um, has uh, shown me. Décidément, j'ai des ennuis avec ce truc. Bon, c'est pas grave. Uh, at the bottom, you have uh, his latest paper, and uh, uh, just above it, you have the one of the first paper, which contains uh, many uh, many things, including uh, a similar type of model. So, what is it? It's a <clears throat> it's a stochastic differential equation for the fish biomass x number of fish in the ocean, um, <clears throat> and uh, of course, you don't know. Uh, x uh, exactly, so you have to allow for a random, and the randomness is, it makes sense to have a randomness proportional to the, to the mass, so you have xt sigma, and we take uh, Brownian motion because we can't do better. Then you have um, the number of boats at sea, uh, so, um, <clears throat> and, uh, uh, okay, so can we make a bit of sense of these equations? So the first equation essentially if you take um, the first uh, member of the, of the right-hand side, you see that the uh, limit for long time is uh, R equal K kappa xt. And so uh, uh, this means that uh, the, if you don't fish the fish, uh, you will um, evolve into a steady state, uh, which is given by R and kappa. R is the uh, rate of reproduction and of death, natural death, and kappa is uh, precisely the long time limit. I mean, connected to the long time limit. And now, if you start to fish, then uh, the number of fish that you catch is proportional to the number of boat, and E is a number of boat, but they call it uh, fishing effort in the literature. And so it's... Um, <clears throat> It's, it's uh, controlled by uh, 
you know, why would a fisherman go and fish? Because he has, he's expecting to catch fish. So F is the number of fish he will catch. P is the price of the fish. And he has cost for operating his boat, which is C. So you have an explanation of the important quantities. And uh, now, um, very special to this talk is the number of fish caught, which is given by the equation in red. Uh, it would be normally um, the capacity of fishing of each boat, which is Q. So QXT is uh, uh, the more there is fish at sea, the more you catch. But then if you put quota, um, then you have a minimum of the quota and the capacity of the fish that you can catch. Um, and then uh, the uh, P in uh, above is, is the price of the fish and it is given by an equation which balance uh, demand and uh, cost. And so, uh, I mean, um, the buying and the selling. And so um, if you assume that uh, uh, the, the price of fish react very fast to the, um, uh, the difference between the demands and the, and the, the availability, uh, then you can replace, uh, you can say that the, right, the left hand side of the last equation is zero and you get an, an expression for the, uh, for the, for the price, uh, which is classical in this type of model. So uh, let me say that this is not only uh, for fish. In fact, any species, uh, any animal, uh, uh, for example, for hunting, it's the same thing. Uh, you have a, an equation for the reproduction of the species, uh, for example, rabbits, and then people kill rabbits and so on. So, uh, so now I'm going to simplify this model because it's a bit too, too, uh, too much for me. And I make, uh, uh, here we go again. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to end up with only one equation in blue, the first one, by assuming that uh, the, the quota is always less than the maximum uh, capacity of, uh, of fishing of the fisherman. So the quota QT is less than the maximum that he can fish. And then in that case, if you introduce a new variable, which I could interpret as uh, uh, the, the number, the, the fishing quantity, uh, total fishing quantity per unit of uh, fish in this species, uh, then uh, the equation is just one equation. Uh, and if you're tired of the black shore equation, you have a new toy here, which is a nonlinear equation, you see, uh, <coughs> but uh, uh, not so bad. And then the initial condition, you can put some random noise on it because you're not too sure. And the quota, uh, then you have, uh, um, uh <coughs> you have um, bounds on the quota. So UT is not exactly the quota. UT is going to be the best possible um, <clears throat> strategy that the fisherman ought to adopt. And it's limited by quota, which is uh, 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 U, cap uh, U capital M. Uh, so you can't fish too much. And uh, you, can't, you also can't fish too less. If you fish too little, sorry, then the fisherman won't, uh, will change his job. Um, and so what is the best strategy for preserving a fishing site, it is to, uh, um, <clears throat> is to minimize this functional, which is the expected value of, um, now you want to reach always to be near to XD, some given, uh, uh, <clears throat> so you estimate that uh, you have a state, an ideal state XD, number of fish at sea. You want to stay near to that. So you have the expected of the mean square integrated over time. But then uh, the quota, the, the optimal strategy, uh, you don't want to be uh, too restrictive. If, you, if the quota is too, uh, uh, too restrictive, then uh, the <coughs> um, it's not popular. And so you penalize by alpha u with a minus sign. And then 
you don't want the quota to change too much from day to day. Because the problem with this uh, um, is that you give directive, quota directive to fishermen, and they, if they change for every, on everyday basis, then uh, they will not know how to uh, <coughs> balance their own uh, <coughs> wallet. And so you want to be a little stable. And so for that, you penalize the quadratic variation of U, uh, which is by definition the limit of uh, the increments square, and which in this case, with this equation, you can show that uh, it is sigma square over two, uh, integral over time of U prime square. So now you have a nice uh, stochastic control problem. And this can be generalized to the vector case. Now, vector case means what? It means that you have several, several uh, species and some one species like uh, uh, <coughs> tuna will eat the sardines. And so uh, you have a relation between the species and that is through the matrix kappa. Uh, <coughs> so if you take the example in the middle in black, here you have two species and uh, a special uh, kappa, which is kappa, it's a two by two matrix, but with signs on the coefficient. And you can see that um, <coughs> with this particular sign written here, uh, species, um, species two eats species one. Uh, because of the minus sign, you see that uh, uh, species two reduces, species one reduces uh, the rate R of species two. And then uh, uh, species two profits from one. So the more there is sardine, the better uh, the tuna. And so R is increased by the presence of sardines. So you can write this in vector form. Uh, I have a little problem of notation is that um, X is a vector and uh, lambda is the operator that transform a vector into a diagonal matrix. So with this notation, sometimes it's called diag, but I don't like diag, so I put lambda. And in this sense, uh, it makes sense. You have noise over all the components of the <coughs> species. And so you have a matrix of correlation of the, of the Brownian motions, sigma, and you have also uh, similar things on the initial condition. Now, uh, it may be useful, uh, but we have not yet used it, is that to notice that this equation could be multiplied by the matrix kappa. And if you do that, then uh, you can write decoupled equation, almost decoupled, in terms of y equal kappa x, uh, which uh, <coughs> means that the equations would be decoupled if there was no noise. So they are only uh, correlated by the noise. So this is nice because it will allow us to check our numerical result. So how do you solve such a problem? Uh, the, the, so the minimization is the same except that uh, you take the norm because you have several, several uh, <coughs> species which, and you want to be close to an ideal vector XD. Right, so uh, in terms of mathematics, uh, it is uh, well posed. Uh, Okay, so the proof of existence of the stochastic differential equation is given by uh, uh, <coughs> Gilles, so I assume it's correct. Uh, I think uh, uh, we don't have time to go into the details, but you have the slides so you can look it up. So there is a unique solution to the uh, SDE. And uh, then for the control problem, it's much more difficult. And, uh, uh, but, um, <coughs> Uh, if you go to the Kolmogorov equation for the problem, so this is in 1D here, uh, you see that you recognize if you change variable, you work with the log, then the Kolmogorov equation for the uh, PDF row is given by the second equation in blue, 
with uh, um, initial condition. And then the problem would be to minimize some uh, uh, <coughs> deterministic uh, um, functional, a little complicated, but for this problem written like that, if you put the appropriate constraints on the set of uh, control, you can show by the theory of PDE existence. Um, so you have two steps to show that there is a solution. First, that there should be um, a, a density rho a PDF. And so for that, uh, the hypotheses are written in black and I take it from a paper by Lebris and Lyons, which they analyze the, the minimum hypothesis to get the existence of a PDF. And then after that, for the control problem, uh, you need some capacity for the control because you have this nasty term beta d by dt of v uh, square here. And so you need some kind, some uh, Lipschitz, uh, uh, or I mean L infinity condition uh, L, uh, L infinity of L2 in, uh, no, sorry, uh, <clears throat> L2 of the derivative in time. Right. Now, um, let's make, let's just first solve this problem by using a neural network. So the idea is very simple. And in fact, uh, it was not the first idea that we had. Uh, the first idea would, would have been to use learning uh, to solve the problem 10,000 times and then to teach the neural network to uh, learn what is a good con uh, solution. That's extremely expensive. And this much more simple idea uh, is due to Mathieu uh, <coughs> Laurier. And um, <coughs> it is shown on this drawing. So I go back to the control problem if I can. Uh, you see, you have to, well, not this one, the stochastic one. J'ai peur que les piles soient un peu usées. This one, so you have um, <coughs> to evaluate uh, the criteria G at one point. What do you do? You take a control U, you solve the SDE, vectorial SDE, and then you put it in the criteria. You do that for by Monte Carlo a, a certain number of times, and you get the value of J for this particular control. So that's exactly what's going to happen with this uh, neural network. We are trying to find a control U of X and T. And we are going to use it as U of X, T, and T. So it, automatically, it is Markovian. So basically, we have two unknowns, x and t, and then uh, the problem with many coefficient theta, which corresponds to the <coughs> link uh, uh, between the circles, uh, <coughs> it's going to construct a function u theta. And <coughs> if you know a little bit about neural network, you see that uh, if I give some coefficient, I can construct u, which actually happens to be, uh, if I use uh, <coughs> real, real u um, uh, <coughs> uh, functions uh, for the nonlinear part of the neural network, this function u is piecewise linear uh, locally. So uh, I cannot tell you where it changes from one slope to another. Uh, that's part of the coefficients. And so given some parameter theta from the neural network, I can construct a control U, piecewise lo uh, linear locally. Then I can solve the ODE, the SDE, sorry. And then I can compute J for this U theta by a certain number of uh, Monte Carlo uh, samples. And so my problem is simply to minimize J with respect to theta. So it is not at all uh, uh, a normal use of the neural network. There is no learning in this. It is not statistical learning. It is just representation of an unknown on a neural network and minimization of 
uh, the, uh, with respect to the coefficient given by the neural network. You can put some mathematics into this picture. You say that uh, we, you still, um, uh, what is a neural network? It's a, it's a set of layers. Each layer is given by L, capital L here, where you have some input and output. And in between the input and output, you have uh, <clears throat> a linear uh, uh, combination beta plus WZ and an activation function, which if you take ROLU, will give you piecewise linearity. And you combine these layers uh, and then you get, you get uh, uh, ND, which is the, <coughs> um, the output of one layer becomes the input of another. And so it's written this way. And the parameters are the parameter beta and W, which you see above. So for a given set of parameters, I can construct the output of this neural network. Okay, so what are the results? Here's the result in, uh, for one species. Uh, you see that um, you have a representation of the, uh, <coughs> of the control. The control is, uh, looks like bank-bank control. On the left, it, is, uh, it hits the lower bound, and on the right, it hits the upper bound. And so, um, but that does not mean that the solution is always bang bang. And you can see it at the second, um, <clears throat> uh, on, the, on the graphs below, you have here, um, <clears throat> we use this function u theta above, and we start from an initial condition which is 0 0.7 here. Uh, we run the stochastic process and we see how it gets close to one. The ideal state is one. And you see that the red curve goes as fast as it can go, which is not very fast, near to one, and it stays near to one. If you don't put quota, so no control, just put uh, uh, maximum fishing, you get the blue curve. So it definitely works. And the control which gives you the red curve is the dotted line. And you see the dotted line is not a bang-bang control. You can do that if you start from a site which has too many fish. So then you start at 1.3 and you want to reach one. And same thing, the control is not bang-bang, but you have parts of the control which is bang-bang, the beginning here. And it was also the beginning there. And so even though this surface looks like the, sol the solution is always bang bang, it is not true because everything happens near to x equal one. Now, the performance of this solution is shown on the top right curve, which tells you the value of the criteria J for given initial conditions. Uh, so it is best when the initial condition is one, because indeed, in that case, you're very close to the states that you are trying to achieve. But, and, it's, uh, and it gets harder as you go far away at time zero. Uh, you should notice that uh, <clears throat> the minimum is near to minus 0 0.5, 10 to the minus two. And that's how we're going to compare the solution by other methods. So other methods, uh, so you have stochastic dynamic programming where you define a value function V from uh, T to the to capital T and you go backward. And so uh, in the end, I don't go into the detail because this is quite classical, though it may be a bit difficult, but still classical. Uh, you end up by over a time step to have to minimize this function E of uh, something. Eta is the uh, next step of 
if you use an Euler explicit scheme, eta is you start from x and you have a noise z with a control u, then eta is the next step. And so if you write this value function and you discretize in time, you end up with the last line. And then you have to minimize the last line with respect to u in order to find the value of the control. So uh, we've done it by quantization, of course. Uh, and um, again, no need to go into detail because many people have talked about quantization. Uh, basically, uh, <clears throat> you have to, you know the value of Vm plus one of eta at some point, but not at all points. And so you have to uh, <clears throat> interpolate and you interpolate with a quantization uh, <clears throat> principle, uh, which uh, the theory of which again is explained by previous speakers. And so I go on. So if you use, uh, so if you use uh, stochastic dynamic programming plus quantization, you get these results. Uh, <clears throat> they look very much the same. You see that the control is also almost bang bang everywhere. Um, <clears throat> the value of the cost function goes, uh, you can't see it, but it's slightly better than with the uh, neural network, but not that much better. On the other hand, uh, rather surprisingly, uh, the control is much more bang bang than in the with the neural network. Um, <clears throat> so the red curve is uh, uh, the value of x along as a function of time, you see it gets near to one. And basically the strategy is if you go above X, you apply a bang bang control uh, to the minimum. And if you go below, you apply to the maximum. So this is a kind of strategy, stupid strategy, which precisely we want to avoid because this solution is not good for the fishermen. So there's a bit of a problem and that shows that our penalization of jumps doesn't work. Now, the good thing is that we can increase the dimension. So this is with three species and uh, the correlation matrix kappa at the bottom right shows you that uh, you have correlation between the species, in particular species uh, uh, two each species one and uh, species three, I don't know, it seems to, be to eat also species one. Uh, no, it uh, it is eaten by one and two. So I can't. I, I'm sorry. I can't tell you uh, if this is the exact solution. What I can tell you is that the neural network has five thousand neurons, which is not that much. That um, <clears throat> we did we did two simulation. One using uh, TensorFlow. Mathieu did it, and one. Uh, I did, I completely rewrote everything because uh, I couldn't do the simulation using Keras. And so I wrote my own uh, neural network and I used uh, automatic differentiation to compute the gradients. And so uh, it's pretty fast. And also the ADAM algorithm is not necessary. I use uh, normal conjugate gradients and uh, within 20 iteration, I get this answer. So it's actually quite performing, but I can't tell you if this is the exact solution of the problem. And uh, <clears throat> I can only tell you that it works pretty fast, less than uh, two minutes. Now, with a, a stochastic uh, uh, <clears throat> control, now it's stochastic control with PDE because stochastic control with quantization uh, we have not have it ready by the time of the conference. Uh, so we are not sure also that quantization would work in 3D, but most likely it will. Uh, and you see, it doesn't work very well. Uh, the, <clears throat> the, the, the surface, so you have a vector surface with three components, u1, u2, u3, and function of three variables. So I, I show you the, the surface as a function of one variable where the other two are put to one, equal one. 
And we, we find the general characteristics, but, but it's very different from the previous one. And uh, it, it's too, uh, too much bang-bang uh, in this case. Uh, and indeed, the uh, performance is quite bad. You see that uh, we don't reach uh, negative value at x equal one. And you see that the control uh, is very much bang-bang and doesn't work as well as before. So um, <clears throat> the traditional method, um, uh, uh, stochastic control. Uh, no, so it, in this case, it's Amintol, Jacobi, Bellman. But it's getting difficult. It's difficult. Now, I try something else. Instead of using, um, <coughs> instead of using a neural network, I discretize my control on a finite uh, difference mesh. It's terrible. It just doesn't work. So neural network is not a bad idea for the representation of unknown function. And then especially that I can go to five dimensional and actually what's limiting is not the computing time, but it's the memory because of the um, automatic differentiation in, in reverse mode. And uh, <clears throat> so this is a case with five uh, species with a um, <clears throat> connection matrix kappa bottom left. And the answers uh, look okay. I, I show you only three components. They, they look reasonable, but again, I'm not capable of telling you whether it's correct or not, except uh, by showing this which shows that uh, maybe it's not that good. So <clears throat> the first top curve shows you um, how to, so the red curve shows you uh, the control and the dot curve shows you the response X. And uh, you see that X uh, is, um, is not going to one. So it's not working for the first one, but for the second one, it's okay. Uh, X in a dotted line, either you go from below or from above is reaching one. And the third one also, although the control is doing nothing. And the, the values uh, are getting slightly negative, but not as much. So I cannot certify uh, this computation of five PCs, but I can tell you that the method works for high dimension. Conclusion, <clears throat> um, well, so what is the takeaway from this talk? The takeaway is that using neural network to represent an unknown is a good idea. In fact, uh, if you take, you have a graph here, which, go, which uh, shows you the representation of an unknown of a function which is, disc, which is discontinuous. Uh, no, this one's not discontinuous, uh, but it has, uh, high discontinuity of slopes. And uh, the representation by the, no, by the neural network is in green, but it, you, it doesn't show, but it's very near to the exact solution uh, for um, <clears throat> a function of three variable. And uh, here I represent u. u is uh, also a vector function and I can take I represent to you u1 plus u2 plus u3 on the diagonal x plus y plus z. And, though, um, and so it's okay. So it's a good idea. The second is that uh, uh, <coughs> statistical learning is, is, a, is a different field from optimization when you use neural network like that. So no cheating. Uh, the fastest method is quantization when you can do it. Uh, but for large dimension, it seems that the neural network will, will be the, uh, the best. And then uh, you can forget about any method relying on a PDE because the PDE cannot be solved in dimension higher than three. And then again, this is only a preliminary study. Uh, it has to be certified by comparing various methods. So, application to Brexit fishing fight. This is a joke. Uh, there you have only one, one uh, 
<coughs> one species, the fish, but you have several fishermen. So you must model several fishermen with several quotas so as to <laughs> keep some fish in the North Sea and prevent people from fighting. Thank you for the, for the invitation.